So this is um, Connect Displayed version two. Um, and thank you guys for coming out so early on a, on a Sunday. You actually survived the con uh, and made it to the end of the, end of the thing. So this is version two. It did version one last year. Anybody here for, for that talk? You wanna show up? Cool, excellent. <clears throat> thank you guys for coming back. So, um, so version one was uh, just the Connect plus uh, uh, one security tool. And what we're doing this year is the Connect plus 20 security tools, or 20 tools in general to run a scenario. So our scenario is gonna be we're using a, a real-time 3D first-person shooter game environment uh, to, let, to collect the contents of a garbage file off of a server. So that should sound uh, familiar to, to some of you, to most of you. <laughs> so let me cover just a little bit about the architecture. We're gonna run right, in, right into it because there's no slides, it's all demo. Uh, so everyone needs to, while I'm doing this, say a quick little prayer to whatever demo god you believe in uh, to make sure that this thing actually functions. I've been testing it all week. That's the, the bad part about doing a talk on Sundays that you spend the entire con like practicing and working on your talk and making brand new mistakes so that you're nervous as hell when you actually finally get a chance to, <laughs> to do it. So that's my state right now. So architecture wise, uh, everything's on this laptop. Um, so the, the version one, the big differences here were that uh, it was Blender using uh, Metasploit's RPC server uh, to, to talk to Metasploit, only Metasploit. But you know, when you wanna talk to Snort and Nessus and, and uh, Edercap and Nmap and all those other guys, there's no RPC, ser RPC server for that. So I wrote an asynchronous uh, uh, multi-threaded XML RPC server that Blender is talking to that then talks to all the external tools. And again, everything's on this laptop. There's a couple VMs that we're gonna use as our, as our victim systems. Um, and there's, well, one external function to go out to the internet, and you'll see that uh, later on. So let's, uh, let's run right into it here. Give me just a second to, to get this going. <coughs> okay, <clears throat> we've got the connect here. Let me uh, get myself all calibrated. And you should be seeing, and you are seeing, the Blender uh, uh, screen interface. And that's just taking a little bit to start up because it's got some large, uh, large sound files and needs to process. Connect exploit initiated. Okay, let's run it and actually, well, let me just leave it like that for now. It's showing the debug stuff up in the top, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll deal with that for now. I could restart it, but uh, <clears throat> we'll lose some output in some later scenes. So this is the, uh, the default room uh, where you start off on and the, and the main gestures are the same as last year for you guys who saw this. So you lean forward, you move forward in the room, you lean to the right, you move to the right, you lean to the left, you go that way. And if you rotate your hips, you'll turn, turn around in the room. <clears throat> so this uh, was meant to be patterned after the, the room uh, in the matrix, you know, like the training room, big white room kind of thing where then they, uh, the big cabinets full of guns came sh shooting in. So that's the first gesture that we're gonna do to bring in the way that we get to the other rooms in there and actually start our, our attack scenario looking for this, uh, this garbage file. So <clears throat> last year also the big differences are, last year every gesture was like, when the gesture fired, it did, when I made the gesture, it, it did it, there was no delay. So you run the risk of when you're hooked up to 20 different things, uh, causing some serious chaos. <laughs> So this year the gestures, uh, there's a little bit of delay before they happen and there's an indication that you're actually causing something. So if you continue to do it, you will cause uh, something to happen. So I'm gonna raise my hand in like a help gesture and I want you to notice the lights that show up on there to indicate that uh, you're, about to, you're about to do something. So put my hand in the thing, the lights light up, they're gonna turn green when the gesture fires and in comes our cabinet full of uh, ammo essentially that we've got. <clears throat> So we're gonna start off our attack against this uh, fictitious uh, company by going into the wireless room. So you go into a room just by putting your, Wi -Fi. Hand, your hand into the, uh, the cabinet. Now we're in the wireless room. Uh, scanning uh, in the wireless room is, is of course the first thing you do is scan for access points. So we're gonna run IW list uh, scan just by doing their scanning gesture, which is like scanning the horizon. And then we should be scanning. Scanning initiated. From our mind. <laughs> <laughs> So this will take a little bit here, and um, let me just cop to something. There's uh, obviously no access points here on stage. When I was originally thinking about this, Refreshing I was like, "Refreshing access points." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, you know, I'll, I'll bring a real live access point to DefCon. I'll be a real man and hack it live on stage." And then I thought twice about that, and I thought, "Well, 
If I did that, I'm sure you guys would hack it before I ever got a chance to. Um, so these are real live access points. They're just not real live access points here on stage. So this is, uh, is, is real live output. Uh, it's just sort of, think of it as a cooking show. You know, and they always have the lasagna in the oven that's already been cooked. That's exactly this scenario. It's just same real live output. And um, I should explain what these things are. <laughs> so so uh, when I thought about how to represent an access point, uh, when I was a kid, we had these, you know, this little um, a toy. It was like a, a, a plastic bubble on a little um, a, a wood platform with wheels on it and a stick, and you push it around. There were little balls in it that would pop up and down. I'm sure some of you guys have, have played with or have seen the same thing. And to me, that's what an access point is. It's like a little thing that's trying to self-contain its packets, but they fly all over the place. So these are kind of purposefully messy, and they're dropping packets all over the place. <laughs> so. Um, the way you target things in, in uh, Connect Display of Course is with a fireball. So we're going to shoot a fireball at this uh, Quest 1824 uh, uh, access point. And uh, the other construct here is that we use the, uh, the walls uh, in, the, in the various rooms um, to help interface with stuff because you can't just do gestures for everything. Some point in time, I mean, hacking tools are text oriented. Some point in time, you got to deal with text. So. Um, the leftmost part is always a context. The rightmost part is menu options. They're always context sensitive menus. So like in this case, um, we've selected an access point so I can choose to dump the packets of that, which of course is the first stage of an attack. Um, so if you've noticed now the packets out of that Quest 1824 are coming to me <laughs> rather than going where it was they were going prior to that. Um, and so again, obviously we're not, we're not uh, really uh, uh, pulling packets down off an access point, but we are going to reuse a PCAP file that was the result of this exact process. And so when it's done, it shows you um, some PCAP files that you've got to choose from. And we're going to choose this top one up here. And we're going to run error crack against it and see if we can crack the web key out of this 1824. Um, so it knows we've chosen a PCAP file. It doesn't know which access point we want to uh, crack, so there's no option to, to do it. So we're going to target it again just shoot another fireball and it gives us the option to crack web with, uh, with PCAP. So that's what we're going to do. Choose that menu option. It doesn't do much because it doesn't take very long to get it. But if it works, it's going to show the key um, as part of the access point itself. Refreshing access points. Oops. So hopefully you can see there's a now a little key icon on, the, on that particular access point denoting that we've got, uh, we've got access to that, to that particular network. So we're done in this room. That's all we need to do for wireless hacking. That gets us access to the network um, that we're going to that we're going to use. And um, let me uh, let me set something up here by uh, well. First, I want to see if this works. <laughs> of course, there's Twitter because you can't be Twitter. a security person without having some sort of access to Twitter. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, the reason I want to go in here is that uh, later on we're going to come back here um, and actually get some hashtags for Connect Exploit. So if you want to tweet something about uh, Connect Exploit. Uh, now's the time to do it, and we'll come back later and see what, uh, what you guys said or what there is to see. Gathering tweets. So this is just uh, some tweets out of my timeline. So what this has done is gone, uh, grabbed uh, 20, or is it 10? 10, I guess, uh, uh, tweets just out of my timeline. And of course, the way you see things, in it, it's tried to uh, replace the, uh, the icons in real time with whoever happens to be out there. Uh, you can see the first one it missed, but let's see who that is. You shoot a fireball at them to see what they said, and it shows up on the on the, uh, on the outside of that. Whoops. I got a bug where sometimes you can go through walls. <laughs> let's see one more and then we'll get out of here. Uh, oh yeah, the, the good old daily show. Okay, now let's go back to the home, but we'll come back to Twitter in a little bit. So if you want to show up there, tweet something about, uh, about Connect Display. Uh, and one more thing I wanted to show you before we kind of move on to there, there's a perch, uh, what I'm calling a perch anyway. Perch. That gets you, um, uh, kind of an overview of the entire world. So this is the world of uh, Connect Exploit version two. You can see all the rooms at once, and you kind of lord uh, over top of them, if you will. And um, so the, you can see that first room over there was the room we started. We've got the wireless access room. We've got the Twitter room. And then the reason I want to show you this, this room over here, uh, just in the kind of the far uh, right-hand corner is the snort room. So snort's role in this whole thing is to kind of be our visibility monitor, right? So instead of 
usually snorts what the defensive guys use. In this case, the attacking guy is going to use it to let us know, are we tripping anything? Do we, you know, is, if, is based on what we've done, are we showing up on someone's radar? And we'll go into the snort room a little later after there's some more stuff. But you can see there's kind of a rotating barrel uh, that refreshes itself every 30 seconds. Um, there's more, there's a barrel per category of alerts. So there's four alert categories in snort. We're only going to worry about the top three. So if, if you see a red, really fast rotating uh, barrel in snort, you know you've done something that's going to trip somebody's uh, IDS signatures. So that, that's the idea behind that. So let's get out of the perch and back into the home. Hi. And we're going to go into uh, Nmap and take a look at this network that, um, that we just got access to from the wireless access points. Nmap. So uh, we list the networks to get an idea of what we can, what we can see. So we got a couple different points here. I'm obviously not going to attack myself. <laughs> this middle one is DEF CON. I don't want to attack that. I'm going to attack uh, 100.0, which is uh, our, uh, our victim VMs here. Oh, let me do it again. Should get the little tick sound every time you select something just to let you know that, that you've picked it. And again, it's kind of purposefully slow there. I mean, I'm, I'm delaying gestures on purpose just to make sure that you're not accidentally picking a menu option. Um, without meaning it, so that's that's why it's changing color and delaying and all that stuff. So this is running an MAP scan against that network. Collecting in map data. And uh, it didn't take long at all because MAP's quick, especially on a local box, <laughs> which is good for us. So what this did was run, go out and run MAP against that uh, that CIDR mask and pull back all the data in an XML file, parse the XML file, spit out uh, some. Uh, some representations of computers, run it through uh, graph viz, and then uh, made a graph for us of the trace route of that network. Obviously, it's not a very large network <laughs> since we only got uh, three boxes, but you get the idea, right? So you get a graphical view of the network that you're dealing with, and you get some hosts out in the room. They're scrolling their ports that are open is the, is the construct here. So 100.1 is us. It's our scanner. 100.7 looks like a Windows box, 139, 445. And then 100.8 looks like it's doing some web services and 2222, so it's probably a Linux box. Target acquired. So we're going to target that guy, of course, by shooting fireballs because fireballs are fun. <laughs> and uh, uh, the best thing I know uh, to get a handle on uh, those uh, Windows boxes is by attacking with Nessus. So we're going to go to Nessus. Nessus. Nessus uh, is a hospital room. <laughs> so, so, so that's the, uh, the construct here because, uh, you know, we're going to dig into this guy and see what, he's, uh, what secrets he's got, what he wants to give up. So if I can get over here, come on. There's two switches on the end of the operating table for Nessus. Uh, this one brings our victim into the room. <laughs> and this other one. Nessus scanning initiated. Initiates a Nessus scan, like it says, like the nice lady. Is Nessus calling. scan completed. So uh, if you've ever run Nessus, you know it doesn't complete that fast. So I will cop to another uh, cooking show uh, portion of this thing. Um, actually, I don't even have Nessus loaded on here. But there is an integration in Nessus that is a real live Nessus scan from that box. It's just the XML file I'm kind of replaying because if you're on Nessus, you know it takes like five or ten minutes per host. And I don't want you guys staring at me for five or ten minutes. <laughs> I like you and all, but... So uh, I need to warn you, uh, just so you're ready for this, because it's, it's, a, it's a weird thing uh, how you can't hear it until somebody tells you to listen to it. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to select uh, one of these uh, vulnerabilities that we're going to dig into. We want to be stealthy, so we're not going after the MS ones. We're not just going to uh, pop shell on a, on a Windows box using you know, a, a interpreter or a, a Mesploit exploit. We're going to go after this uh, shares unprivileged access, which is, is uh, Nessus speak for an open share. Right, but when I, when I select it, it's going to read you the output of the, of the Nessus vulnerability or the Nessus uh, description. But if you're not ready, you won't hear it. So listen. <laughs> the following shares can be accessed as LBBIWMGN. File as readable plus content of this share. Test.txt troubleshooting.pcap. Okay, so we've got uh, two files accessible on an open share, if, if, uh, if you heard it. And um, one of them is a PCAP file. So I don't know about you guys. Whenever I find a PCAP file in a pen test, first thing I want to do is uh, run it past EdderCAP to see if there's anything in there that I can use. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to package this up. Packaging your vulnerability. And this puts it in a little ammo box that's going to follow us around kind of like Thor's hammer, 
right? So it, uh, it, it attaches ourselves, it, it attaches to our hand, and the fun thing is you can kind of outrun it, you can go faster, and then it will, <laughs> and then it will catch up to you. <laughs> so, and it's going to follow us around to the rest of the rooms here, well, until we get rid of it, which we're going to do hey. shortly. So, you know, it's gone. It's, it's trying to find me and it's running through walls and all that stuff right now. Uh, and it's going to catch up to us in the editor cap. Edit cap. Um, you can. There's no reason uh, why you couldn't in this particular uh, thing so far. The, the question was, sorry, I should repeat the question. The question was, can you carry multiple containers? And yeah, you can. There's absolutely nothing stopping you f from, uh, from doing that. In this case, uh, one at a time is really all I need for, for this particular scenario. And that took a long time to get that to happen. So <laughs> I'll have uh, more than one. Um, but when I came into the uh, editor cap room, it knew because this container exists in the scene that I had a target, that I had a vulnerability, and so it gave me a menu option to uh, to target that guy. So editor cap for me, uh, the hard part of this thing is like, how do you represent all these various tools that don't have a physical manifestation? Editor cap's a big swirling death. <laughs> so, so that's what it is. Um, so we're going to send this to editor cap. Oh, another thing to listen for: listen to the sad tone in her voice. I didn't tell her to do this, but she sounds so sad when she says this. Target sent to Etchicap. <laughs> Etchicap exploiting vulnerability. Etchicap finished. <laughs> so, it sounds so sad, doesn't it? It's like target sent to Etchicap. Okay, so, uh, so what, what happened just then? We knew we had a, an open SMB share, right? So uh, um, that, there's a script attached to that that knows if there's an open SMB share to run an SMB client, pull down files. If there's a PCAP file, send it to Etchicap. Etchicap parses it and spits out any credentials that it happens to find. So now we've got creds that we can go use. So let's go back and uh, root. Sounds like a Hi. sounds like a Linux box. So let's go to our um, Nessus area, or I'm sorry, in map area, which is where we pick targets that we're interested in. You know, and we got oops, get back over here. So we got the Windows guy targeted. Untarget him. Target acquired. Target acquired. Target acquired. <laughs> I've gone crazy. Let's. Untarget this guy. Come on. Okay. And let's be accurate and target this guy. Target acquired. Targeting is important in games and it's also um. important in this game. Uh, so we got a guy with 80 and 443 uh, open and we have some credentials. So let's go to the web room and web. See, see what we can do for those. So here's our target who came with us into the web room. We're going to scan him uh, for URLs. This is just going to run wget against him and see what we can find. Gather URLs completed. <laughs> it sounds like it's, uh, it, it announces when it does, something announces when it's done. So if they happen almost simultaneously, it sounds like that, where it kind of came over top of itself. So you can see we didn't really get much, right? So let's use our credentials that we just got from Intercap. It gives us this option because it notices that we have credentials and it just ticks on a, uh, I'm going to use credentials, kind of a Boolean flag, and let's scan again. Gathering URLs. Gathering URLs completed. So now we got quite a bit more. So let's just wget uh, using those uh, credentials that we had. And there's a whole list of URLs. We can scan through them. The gesture for that is just get, you put your left hand behind you a little bit, and then you do kind of a give me more data uh, movement. So we've got a bunch of URLs we can, we can pick from. We're going to pick this uh, challenge three guy just because I know that it works. <laughs> and now that we've got a URL selected, it gives us an option to, uh, to launch SQL map. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to launch SQL map and try to get some more credentials and see if we can kind of stealth our way on. SQL the, map initiated. To get, retrieve our garbage file. So when SQL map finishes, it's going to display whatever it gets. SQL map completed. If your results include hash values, you may wish to visit John the Ripper for assistance. <laughs> a little foreshadowing, uh, maybe. <laughs> a little uh, obvious foreshadowing. So uh, obviously we got a username administrator and a hash out of the uh, the back end database. So that was a SQL map just running in in a password, you know, give me a password mode. And just like uh, we did before, we're going to package these up in a little module uh, because they're not quite complete. We need more data out of them. So we're going to package this up and we're going to take it off to, uh, to John. Packaging your creds. I don't know if you can Say see hi to John for me. Okay, yeah. I will. <laughs> She's got a sense of humor in that. Okay, so let's go to John. John. So John, there's a little red box in the corner because 
I don't know what else to do with John. <laughs> the cool thing in Blender uh, is um, I'm not spending much time on Blender. If you have questions about the game engine, it came to our cribs. Um, what, one cool thing is it's got uh, like a distant sensitive sound. So the closer I am, the louder the sound, you know, farther away, uh, the quieter, quieter the sound as well. So it's got some, you know, just I guess those are standard game engine features now, but they're new to, new to Blender. So we're going to crack these credentials by sending them off to John. Credentials sent to John. And when he works, he's going to display them on the wall. John activate. John completed. So John did this work that fast because uh, that was a real time John crack, by the way. It wasn't a cooking show type thing. But that password obviously is in John's uh, default password database. So it just took that, it was a MySQL hash, uh, cracked it against that. And so now we've got administrator creds. Uh, with an oddly familiar uh, password. <laughs> so uh, let's select those because we're going to use, make use of those. And... Credentials selected. So I left this uh, kind of raw. I could have done the same ammo box thing, but I wanted just an opportunity to talk about like one of the coolest things in Blender is the Python scripting engine in there. And uh, so for example, this object, uh, me right here, I'm just called the player in the scene. And you can attach Python uh, dictionaries to anything um, in any object inside Blender. So when I selected those credentials, all that really happened was it took this string. If you're a Python guy, you'll recognize that as a Python dictionary. Just a, a field value, field value, right? So username, administrator, password, Gibson, hash. And it attached that as a cred to the player. So now any, anything else inside Blender can make use of that same thing. So it kind of has its own internal data transfer uh, mechanism. And we're going to use these, uh, these creds next. So we got a, a real administrator. Home. Uh, cred, and uh, let's see what's. Let me check my cheat sheet here. Sorry. <laughs> All right, let's go. Um, let's go back and select our uh, our Windows box since we've got uh, an administrator account. In map. Oh, okay. Let's unselect that dude, and we're gonna select that guy. Yes, we are gonna select that guy. Target acquired. Target acquired. <laughs> Yeah, fireballs bounce. <laughs> Target acquired. Screw you. Okay, one target acquired. So <laughs> one at a time. We'll work on the mass module. Um, Maybe that's next year. <laughs> you can target 100 things or something. And we're going to go to obviously the last two rooms here in our scenario. Are, uh, so what we're, what we're after here is, uh, like I mentioned, the contents of a garbage file. So the final goal is to get some forensic work done. The thing that's going to help us get onto the box, however, is, uh, is Metasploit. So uh, let's go to Metasploit. Metasploit. And uh, let's see, maybe we have a console. Yeah, we do. Okay. So we have a console output from Metasploit. It's complaining and bitching about not being updated, but I didn't want to break anything, so <laughs> it's not updated recently. Uh, let's go up here. We're, so what this is going to do is run PS exec to get an interpreter session Loading. on the box. And it's going to run, uh, I don't know if you guys were here last year for Wes McGrew's uh, talk, but he released a module that gets you a, um, a forensic interface, just an MBD server, a network block device server um, on a box. So through interpreter, you can then run any forensic tool uh, that you want. So that's what we're running against that. So it's just PS exec using those credentials that I just showed you. And it's uh, attempting to run this, uh, this module. And as you can see, it failed dramatically. So uh, sometimes that happens, and you just run it again. And we can do the same thing using gestures. Loading. So we're we loading. <clears throat> it's going to try it again. If it works, it'll serve up the C drive. Um, as a network block device. And there it is, serving up uh, a C drive, uh, and the entire uh, C drive is now available to us as a, as a network block device. So that's awesome. <laughs> and we're going to use that in the final stretch here. Uh, whatever you guys said to the demo guys, you keep saying it because we're doing pretty good. Uh, we're going to go to the forensic room and see what we can find out about this uh, now that we've got raw, raw access to it. So we're going to connect uh, uh, using MBD, just MBD client, a uh, regular Linux client. Loading. And uh, it's made the connection and given us another option to search the garbage, uh, aka the recycler bin in, uh, in Windows. Searching. So this kicks off a job that's going to take just a little bit. So let me explain 
kind of what it's doing while we're, while we're waiting for the output. And then we'll go to some other rooms while we're waiting for the output also. So this is live, real time, actually hitting that box, searching through. So it's uh, got, a, got a raw, like, much like a DD image on there. It's going to run FLS out of the sleuth kit and just look for anything with the word recycler in it and then display it uh, up on the wall. So in the meantime, let's go uh, out to the perch and uh, see if we have some snort uh, output that we can take a look at. And it looks like we do. We've got a couple barrels, so let's get out of the perch and see if we can go see what, what alerts we've triggered um, so far. So here we go, snort. 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 So I'll only do one, and then we'll move on to something else here. But all you do is just touch the, the barrel. You can get close to it. There's something interfering here. And it uh, coughs out just a little summary of what alerts uh, are there for that particular barrel. So you can see uh, these are like priority two alerts in Snort. So we got some port sweeps that obviously are from our MMAP scan, uh, and then some other stuff probably from the, uh, the SQL map uh, that we did. So that's the Snort integration. Home. And while we're waiting for our forensic output, it will announce it to us when we, when we get, we don't have to go back to the room to check. It'll say uh, forensic output received. Let's go to Twitter and see if. Twitter. Whoa, I ran into stuff. <laughs> Let's uh, see if there's any connect exploit related stuff besides my one sorry tweet early this morning. Gathering oh. tweets. Cool. All right. Let's see what, uh, I'll try to knock some of these down. Because the fun thing about these, they don't have much weight to them, much like tweets don't. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can kind of you kind of knock them over if you hit them enough times with uh, with fireballs. Oh come on, fall over, please. Uh, of course now it's not gonna. <laughs> uh, let's see what else here. Yeah, hack the Gibson exactly. Yep, that's what we're doing. Uh, let's see what else we got. <laughs> Cool. I mean, come on, forensic output. <laughs> oh, see this. A lot of people with default icons. <laughs> and by the way, I should have said uh, all the code for this is going to be uh, available up on my site. So the, you saw it in, in the initial uh, intro there. It's just pwnlabs.com slash defcon20. Uh, and I, everything that, um, that's, that's here will be available there. You're going to give me just a little bit to clean it up because there's a lot of, uh, a lot of bad code <laughs> still, um, still left in here. But it'll all be open on there. And Blender as well is open source. If you go to blender.org, um, it runs on Linux, Mac, Windows, um, and, and any Blender file that you create like this can run on any platform. Of course, given uh, uh, assuming that you've got all the rest of the stuff uh, on, on there. I mean, obviously, if you're going to use MMAP, you have to have MMAP as well. So you've got to have all that stuff loaded. So again, every, everything out of here will be all. Um, Forensic output received. Cool. So we got our forensic output. So let's go back to home. home. And let's go back to the forensic room. Let's go put room shortcuts forensic. in there next because it gets a little tiring going around. So it did a FLS uh, against that. And if you've ever done FLS and Mac times, all that stuff in forensics. So what we got is the inode number on the far left and then the name of the file. So this is just everything that has recycler. Uh, on that particular Windows box. If you have ever done forensics and recycling bin and all that kind of stuff, you'll know that the info2 file, which I'm trying to select down here in the very bottom, is the, kind of the index for everything in the recycle bin. So we're going to choose that. No con. There we go. Info2. And uh, a connect exploit knows that uh, info2 file can be parsed with uh, refiuti and it gives us the option to do that. So I'm going to choose refiuti and it's going to pull down that file. Retrieving forensic output received. So what it did just there was run ICAT against that network block device with that inode number, pull down info2, run it against refiuti and give us a bunch of well, what looks like crazy output. But we can go back to the beginning of this output. I think we can. Come on. Okay. So it just tells you where the file was. And then the uh, important thing to pay attention to, so the index number is the number that gets added to DC. Uh, so DC1 you know, uh, will be this file up here. And if you notice, the file's name is uh, C slash, in other words, root slash period workspace slash garbage dot text, uh, which sure sounds like the file that, uh, that we're interested in. So let's go uh, get our previous output here, search garbage again. Searching. 
And this is going to... Forensic gonna, output received. So it ran that same exact thing that it took you know, a couple minutes last time, but it caches it, so it takes a lot less time uh, the second time through. So we're going to pick uh, DC1, which we got from our index on there. And then, if this works, it's the grand finale. <laughs> so let's hope it works. So we're going to ICAD that file out and see what it's got. Retrieving. So let me go over here. It's uh, displayed the output on the back wall. So let me just go over here and turn around. And hopefully this will work and will be the end of Connect Exploit version 2. So there we go. There's the, uh, the, <laughs> the output of that file. It's in that place where I put that thing that time. Which, if you've ever seen, uh, if you've seen hackers recently, uh, you you will recognize that. So that's Connect Exploit.